All right, hello YouTube, this is Ryan, and in this video, I am super excited to show you how to use AutoPad's standalone Mac app. In version 1.9, AutoPad now runs on Mac OS, so there's just even more ways you can bring it in to what you're doing into your mix, into your live sets. And I worked really hard on these features and I really hope people like it. Uh, I think it's pretty cool how easy Apple made it for developers to bring these things over from iOS. And so by all means, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. And if you end up using AutoPad on Mac, uh, let me know how you're using it. I'd be really interested to see how it goes for people. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the launch pad and select AutoPad. AutoPad, you can install it from the Mac App Store. And I'm just going to click on it to launch it. And it pops right up here. And we can just, you know, resize the window if we want. And like the iOS version, we have the live and the set list modes. In our live mode, we have the menu with all the same settings. Uh, we have our, our click settings, which now in AutoPad 1.9, we have new click sounds. So be sure to check those out. I did get a few comments in the previous version about how people didn't love the, the click sound I chose. So now you have four options. In the standalone app, uh, you can stay in sync with other devices on the same Wi-Fi network using Ableton Link. Uh, if you're curious about how that works, check out uh, one of my other tutorial videos. We can connect to Bluetooth MIDI devices. We can, you know, use MIDI. Um, in fact, why don't I, I show you some of that? I'll, um, I'll connect this. I have a little keyboard connected and I'll just select that. It's my keyboard. And this new feature is MIDI Actions. This is something that's brand new in AutoPad. 1.9 for iOS, we have the ability to control AutoPad via MIDI and we have a lot of control over how we set that up. I'll show you the live mode actions today, uh, which the live mode actions, uh, we have a play pad action, which starts at, in this case, MIDI note 60. Uh, we have a stop pads action, which will stop anything that's playing, and that's going to be MIDI note 48. I uh, have an action for toggling the click on and off, and we also have an action for selecting sounds. So we can change sounds on the fly without even having to open a, the sounds menu. And some of you with uh, knobs on your MIDI controllers will be excited to see that we have CC actions down here, and we can you know, get those set up to various destinations, uh, AutoPath's filters, the reverb amount, pan, and level, and things like that. So I'll leave that on, on crossfade. The easiest way to get your MIDI action set up when you're in the standalone app is to use this little record button. And when this record button is active, it's listening for the next MIDI note to come in. So let's say I actually want to use a different note than 48. I'm just going to hit a different note on my keyboard. And I hit MIDI note 52, and you notice it jumped to 52, and then it turned off the MIDI learn. So I actually do want it at 48, so let's record again and go back to 48. So if you're not sure what you know, CCs you're sending or what notes you're sending, if you're in the standalone app, you can just hit record, press a key, and AutoPad is going to remember that action even across launches. So let's go ahead and use these. I know you can't actually see my keyboard, but I'll show you how you can control it with MIDI. And I'll get down here in a second. So let's exit out of the menu. And um, I'm going to use uh, one of the MIDI notes. 60 is the lowest MIDI note that triggers a pad. So we're hearing pads right now. And I'm going to choose a different sound, or sorry, a different, different key. And let's actually change the sound. So I'm going to just press a key to choose a sound. And I'm going to stop pads.
So the sounds action is selecting sounds from up here. Uh, there are 10 factory sounds that come with AutoPad. And we also have this favorites feature. So you can add favorites to AutoPad. You can add up to 10 favorites. So if you have favorites, uh, the select sound action selects from those. And if you don't have favorites, the select sounds action is going to go from the factory bank. You can see we have all of our in-app purchases available on the Mac app through the store. And we also have the ability uh, to import sounds just like on the iOS version. So let's back out. We also have our set list mode, which is also controllable with the MIDI actions. And um, we have our set list manager, and we also have our share set list down here. So I'm really excited that AutoPad is on the Mac now, and I hope people are able to find a use for it, find other ways to bring it into their live setups and into whatever they're doing. Um, and it's just been so amazing for me to see people using AutoPad around the world. It's super humbling, and it inspires me to keep making AutoPad better. So if you think this is cool, let me know, and let me know how you're using AutoPad in the comments. If you want to keep up with me, please subscribe to the channel. I am documenting my progress as a developer making music apps for people. And just have a great rest of your day making music, and I'll see you in the next one.